Real quick, let me just go over why vacuuming your substrate is so important. Fish waste and uneaten fish food hanging out in the bottom of your tank is going to be detrimental to your water's quality. It's going to cause ammonia, it's going to cause high nitrates, it's going to cause cloudy water in your tank, and nobody wants that. Now you may be thinking that that's what your filters are there for, to get all that waste out of your tank. But I'll be the first to tell you, you'd be wrong. I've got so much water movement in this tank. I've got two wave makers, I've got two canister filters, and still, every week, I find pockets of poop hiding out in a corner somewhere or hiding out underneath one of these decor pieces. And unless I vacuum that stuff out, it would stay in that tank indefinitely. So while I start to set up to do this water change, I'm going to show you guys how I vacuum my sand substrate. And later on in the video, I'll show you how I vacuum my gravel substrate from my quarantine tank. So I'm removing my decor right now from the tank. Pretty easy since I only got these two big pieces. But I will tell you that before this, I did turn off my filters. I do this because I don't want the filters to suck up any waste that's free right now, now that I removed the decor. I want to do that part of the job myself. Allowing the filters to do that now kind of defeats the purpose. It'll just add more waste into the canisters themselves, while I'm already set up to remove the waste completely from the entire system. I need the filters to do their job when it's not maintenance time. But right now that we're cleaning, we'll get it done ourselves. So what I use to do my vacuuming is the Python. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. If not, it's a really good tool. Uh, it comes with this really cool stop valve right here. I'll show you guys exactly how to use that later in the video. But you don't need to have an actual Python. All you need is a tube connected to a hose. And I'll show you guys exactly how to create a siphon that's going to pull the detritus right out of your tank. So if you have a Python and you want to connect it to your sink, it's pretty self-explanatory how you get your siphon. When you connect it to your sink and turn the faucet on, it's going to pull water from your tank and out to your sink and down the drain. But I want to go over how to create a siphon if you don't have a Python. So right here guys, I'm using my Python tube and hose, but I don't have it connected to the sink. I've realized a long time ago that that's a good way to waste a lot of water. So the other end of my hose is just sticking out the door, out the backyard, into the grass. So the way you want to start your siphon, you want to stick your tube in your tank upside down so that it fills completely with water and releases all the air bubbles from the tube. Now that your tube is completely submerged in the water, you want to lift it up out of the tank, above the tank, so that gravity forces that water down through your hose. Now before all the water leaves your tube, you want to close that stop valve which is like locking the siphon in place. Now don't worry, if you don't have this python and you don't have this lock valve, I'm going to show you another way of how to achieve the same thing. After you've closed your valve and trapped the siphon inside the hose, you want to put your tube back into the tank the same way as before, fill it with water again, release all the air bubbles from the tube, and then flip it so that the open end now is pointing down close to your substrate. At this point, you can open the valve back up and now you've got a good siphon sucking water out of your tank and out the other end of your hose. If you guys only knew how long it took me to learn that, you'd be surprised. Now that we got a good siphon going, we can start vacuuming the substrate. So what you want to do is start on one side of your tank and check the technique that I'm doing here. You just want to brush the top of the substrate when it comes to sand. If you go too deep into your sand substrate, the siphon is going to suck up the sand and you don't want that to happen. So you just want to brush the top of your substrate and you're going to pick up plenty of stuff, trust me. Take a look at that poop going up that tube. This is the stuff that stays hanging out in your tank. Even though your filters are working at max capacity, this stuff tends to stay trapped in your water and unless you do this vacuuming, it'll never come out. Slowly and carefully, you want to just skim the top of the substrate as best as you can. I'm going to show you guys a little trick later on on how to get this done if you do scoop up a whole bunch of sand. There's an easy way to make sure that you don't just toss all your sand out of your tank. So I'm getting to the halfway point in my tank and I've got a divider on the top. So I've got to take the tube out and put it into the other side. Now's a good time to show you guys how to create the siphon if you don't have this stop valve on your hose. Sorry I didn't get the best camera angle right here guys, but what you want to do is basically just kink your hose. Hold on to the kink in your hose as you take the tube out. Now when you take the tube out of your tank, you want to flip it upside down 
so that all the detritus that's in the tube currently doesn't just fall right back into your tank. So you want to flip it upside down and take it out with the opening pointing upwards and make sure you're holding on to that kink nice and tight. When you put the tube back into the water, you're going to put it back in the same way with the opening facing upwards. You're going to let it fill up with water, release all the air bubbles from the tube, then point your tube downwards again so that the opening is facing the substrate and then release your kink. That will maintain the siphon and you can continue vacuuming your substrate. Now, if you take a look at the detritus that's in the tube, all of that stayed in the tube while I was holding the kink. That's the stuff that you don't want to release right back into your tank. And as you can see, there's a lot of waste hanging out on the top of that substrate. For those of you that are curious as to why I've got those ceramic rings just hanging out in my tank, well, I'm trying to get them seeded because I have a pretty big project coming up soon. Don't want to spoil anything, but you'll see why in a future video. So just like we had to get the decor out of the way so that we can vacuum around it, I've got to move this biomedia out of the way also to get underneath of it. There's plenty of waste back there as well. As you see, I'm still just brushing the surface, not trying to get too deep into the sand. Now in theory, the way sand substrate is supposed to work is that all your detritus is supposed to just sit on the surface of the sand. But when you have fish like these, African cichlids, they love to dig through that sand, create hills, peaks and valleys, and you'll be surprised as to how much waste actually gets underneath the sand. So I'm gonna show you guys a little technique that I use to also be able to pull some waste out from underneath the sand. So what I wanna do now is mix up this substrate a little bit to try and release any detritus that's stuck underneath of it. I'm gonna dig the tube into the sand and as you can see, it fills very quickly with sand. The technique is once a portion of the tube is filled with sand, you wanna close your valve. When you close the valve, it's going to stop the siphon and all the sand that's inside your tube will fall right back down into the tank. Then you open your valve back up and you've got your siphon going again. And now you can vacuum up any detritus that just got freed from that little digging of the sand that we just did. Again, if you don't have the stop valve, you can use the same exact technique. All you need to do is kink your hose when your tube fills up with sand and all the sand will drop back down into the tank. Now look at the detritus that I've got in the tube that I was able to free up by digging through the sand a little bit. Now let me give you a quick warning on this technique. You don't wanna do this all over the bottom of your tank all in one cleaning. You wanna pick your spots because your substrate houses a lot of your beneficial bacteria and disrupting all of your substrate like this, all in one shot, could potentially cause problems. So use this sparingly, pick your trouble spots where you think is the most likely place where you have a buildup of detritus hanging out in your tank, that's where you wanna use this digging technique so you can get the maximum amount of detritus out of your tank. Now I know where my trouble spots are at, so I'm gonna do the digging technique right here. This is where that big rock goes in my tank and I always see detritus building up right in the middle of it, right underneath the opening of the big rock. So doing the digging technique right here is going to free up a bunch of detritus that's been trapped underneath the sand. So again, I'll dig deep, let the tube fill up with some sand, lock the valve, close the valve, and the sand falls right back down into the tank. Then I reopen the valve and I got my siphon going again. And immediately you can see some big pieces of poop getting sucked right up. Now because I want to make sure that I got everything out of here, I'm going to give the top of my substrate one more pass. So I know some of you have gravel in your tank, which is much more simpler to vacuum. So let's go over that real quick. So this is my quarantine tank guys. These aren't new fish. These fish were getting bullied over there in the main tank and I wanted to kind of give them a break. So I moved them over for about a week or two but it's a good time to show you guys how I vacuum the gravel in this tank. So like I said before guys, you don't need a python to get this done. This is a generic tube and hose and this one actually comes with a suction pump on the hose. So it's much simpler to get a siphon going. I've got one end of the hose into a bucket on the floor and then I put the tube in the tank and just give this pump a couple of squeezes and that'll suck the water right out of the tank down into the bucket. And there you go, you got your siphon going. So with a gravel substrate, you basically want to start off the same way you would with sand. 
you just want to brush the top of your gravel and get any detritus that's hanging out on the surface. You can do this in every area of the tank. As long as you're not disrupting the substrate, you can vacuum the whole top of your substrate. You want to do this first to make sure you get any pieces of detritus that are hanging out on the surface. You want to get those out of the tank first before moving on to the bigger cleaning part of it. As you see, I'm just brushing the surface of the gravel, trying to get up anything that's just hanging out on the top of it. Once you got that done, then you can use this digging technique on the gravel, just like with the sand, but this time it's much simpler because the gravel is much heavier. So once you dig down deep and the gravel enters your tube, all you got to do is lift the tube up off the bottom of your tank and the gravel will fall back down into the tank on its own. As you can see, all this dust and dirt that's getting pulled up from in between the gravel, this is the stuff that you want to get out of your tank when you do a vacuum. Now, just like with the sand, you don't want to disrupt too much of your substrate all in one cleaning. So I'm only going to do this digging technique in the gravel on the front half of my tank. I'm going to leave the back half for the next time that I do a vacuuming on this tank. By the way guys, if you remember Flavor Flav from a previous video, that's him right there hanging out, doing well, after getting some treatment for his internal parasites. Little update for you guys. And after you've done the digging technique, then you wanna, once again, just go over the entire surface of your gravel and scoop up anything that was released from underneath the gravel. Again, guys, keep this in mind, very important. When you're taking your tube out of your tank, you wanna point it upwards and take it out that way so that whatever is still hanging out inside your tube doesn't just pour right back into your tank and check out how foggy and yucky that water looks in the bucket that's all the dirt that was inside that 10 gallon tank so let's say you're doing all your schedule water changes you're vacuuming your substrate like you're supposed to now that you know how to do it and you're still having trouble getting a clean and clear looking tank well make sure you watch this video right here that's going to give you some great tips on getting crystal clear looking water but wait before you do that, make sure you hit the circle down here so you can subscribe and never miss any new content. See you on the next one.